Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening gaming in the wonderful world of video games and technology, and today, we're going to be taking a look at Metrico Plus for the PC. Let's take a look, shall we? Metrico Plus is a game for those who just couldn't get enough out of their statistics class. Welcome to Metrico Plus, where platforming and puzzles meets infographics and pie charts. In Metrico Plus, you'll explore a multitude of worlds, solve puzzles, listen to some pretty sweet music, and think outside the box. But the question remains, is Metrico Plus worth your time? The basics of the gameplay are pretty simple. You play as a random generic guy and or girl. As random generic guy and or girl, it's your job to platform and puzzle solve your way to victory throughout each of the six worlds. With each world, you gain a new ability to change the way the world and its puzzles react, and as such, you gain more difficult and more challenging puzzles to solve. Each world is based on the set of skills you gain, and with that in mind, each world's puzzles become more challenging with more steps involved as the levels progress, as well as adding in skills you previously learned. In the beginning of each world, the puzzles are simple and are introductions to the main character's new skills. As the puzzles progress in each world, the puzzles involving those skills become more challenging. There's a nice sense of progression in each world, and furthermore, the entire game. Individual puzzles don't have the cohesion that I feel they need in order to master any one particular style of puzzle, but they all play out in interesting ways that make up for their lack of core cohesion with each puzzle by making each world's difficulty ramp up better. With that being said, the featured ability you gain in each world often takes precedence over previously learned skills, and a few skills the player ends up learning aren't used nearly as often as others. There's also the ability to quit and return to any individual checkpoint or puzzle in the map area. It's a nice touch that means people who aren't into puzzles, or for those who don't play one game until it's finished, can go back at any time to any puzzle of each world, rather than just the worlds. It's a nice touch to include for more casual puzzle game lovers into the universe of Metro Club Plus. The only thing that will kill the game is its replay factors. While it's a wonderful 2-4 hour experience, there's little reward to replay the game, which might make it compared to other platformers a little on the pricey side of things at $14.99 USD. Visually, the game is very beautiful to look at, and the idea of basing a puzzle platformer on graphs and infographics is a neat concept. The vibrant colors combined with the simple visuals make a nice and appealing game. The backgrounds take full advantage of its 3D and adds infographics and pie charts galore. That being said, its visual style is purely that, and doesn't take any true advantage of the math portion that it might have focused on and stylized more into game integration, rather than it simply being a reactive world. With that, it is interesting how the background reacts to the player and his or her decisions. In fact, we didn't actually notice it until the second or so world. A nice stylized touch where everything sort of moves as you move. As for the audio and sound, I love it. The music and soundtrack is simple, in a what-you-probably-think-your-math-teacher-like sort of way. The world's reactive style also lends itself to the audio effects. Everything the player does makes a sound, and it's hard to describe because it plays well into the musical background pieces. It's interesting hearing the sounds you make while solving the puzzles and how it blends into the music so well. <laughs> Control-wise, the game is fairly straightforward. I played with my Lunar White Xbox One controller, but it also worked fine with an Xbox 360 controller. And we also played a world with keyboard and mouse. The controls seem to work fine with their transition from PlayStation Vita to PC. Settings-wise, there are some basic graphical and resolution settings, as well as the option for things like depth of field and V-Sync. The frame rate also appears to be locked at 60 FPS. The UI also appears to have been changed from the Vita version of the game, and it rather suffers for it, if I'm frank. It doesn't look terrible, but it could have used a new menu layout to accompany its PC release. For Metro Plus, it's a fun game that suffers from replayability and the passage of time. Once you play through the game once or twice to master the puzzles, there's little to really keep the player coming back. In short, it's a fun 2-4 hour experience, but it suffers from the fact that it leans on its puzzle elements too much compared to the platforming elements, making replayability rather difficult for a game like this. For me, the game is great at what it does, but its lack of replayability makes it rather difficult to suggest at $13.99. And yes, I'm well aware I said $14.99 previously. If you're not fully sold on the game by now, and what gameplay you've seen of it, I'd suggest to wait on a sale. As is, Metro Plus is a great game with a great visual style and great soundtrack that suffers from lack of replayability. If the developer decides to add something like workshop support and or custom levels, then consider the game a solid full price recommendation from us. This has been your Wolfson Gaming taking a look at Metro Plus, and we hope you enjoyed. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen, and we shall see you all in the next video.